Uh, my name is Brock Zevian. I'm a life coach, a business coach, a real estate agent, and I love being a dad. I get my kids this weekend. I, well, I've had them since Wednesday. Uh, we had open house yesterday with my daughter. She's going to be in the fifth grade. Does not seem possible already in the fifth grade. Uh, so just very blessed uh, with my children. So I have them this weekend. It's supposed to be nice here. I am in Charlotte, North Carolina. It's supposed to be in the 90s this weekend. So uh, excited to be able to still have a little summer fun. And they start back to school on Monday. So uh, they get themselves going. So let's dive into today. Today. So the conversation today is about the power of pain. And I hope you guys are okay with this. And if you don't mind, just because I need a little extra energy on this one today, because I'm going to go back into like, are you guys okay? I'm going to share with you a little bit about my personal life. Um, I have to be a little cautious because I am dealing with a couple issues, but um, in legality world, for those that, uh, you know, I eat my own words, what I've come to realize that the more exposure that I have and the more conversations that I have and the more that I'm on Facebook in live, people do criticize you. OK, it does happen in the criticizing world. And so there's also things that take place and you'd be amazed at the conversations that I have. And so where I'm getting with this is. I had a conversation with an attorney recently, and so I'm going to be vulnerable a little bit about my personal life, and I can just give you cliff notes of my conversation that took place. Those that know, I was $153,000 in IRS debt, okay? If you don't pay the IRS for four years, they really don't like that, and they will come find you. So when people that I'm dealing with and I'm coaching, trying to get themselves out of financial debt, I learn the hard way and I'm growing through this as we speak. And so I had to go through some assets and I'm dealing with a couple other challenges. And I literally was having a conversation with, the, with my attorney and my attorney was asking me for my assets during this year and literally no joke. Okay. I can't make this stuff up. He says, Brock, I'm, I'm going through your 2019 here, and I don't understand what they're trying to come after you for. And I said, when I say to you, my grandfather used to say this to me, I didn't have a pot to piss in or a window to throw it out. I can't make that up. And he says to me, Brock, I reviewed everything that you sent me. There's nothing here. You didn't even have a job. I said, I know. Yeah, it wasn't fun. And I had employees at that time. I had 18 people on my real estate team. And he says, I just don't get what they're trying to sue you for. And I said, I, I, I don't know. They just think that I had some sort of offshore accounts or they, they want to come after me from this and they want to look at it from this way. And, and, the, and then the IRS was looking at this thing over here. I'm like, I, I honestly, I didn't have anything. He goes, Brock, can I ask you a question? I said, yeah, sure. What, do you, what is it? This is an attorney now, okay? Makes hundreds of thousands of dollars. And I, I look up to attorneys. Sometimes I don't, but for the most part, I do. He said to me, <clears throat> and sometimes it gets me choked up, I don't understand how you got to your position today in just three years. I said, excuse me? He goes, it just doesn't make sense to me. You had nothing three years ago in 2019, and I'm looking at what you have today, and it doesn't make sense. Like, how did you do that? And here's an attorney asking me how I turned my life around. Like, in real life, like, I coach it, I talk it, I'm on video, but, like, sometimes it smacks you in the face when they say, how did you do this in real life? And I wrote down some notes because I didn't want to miss this because I thought it was very, very important because when the conversation I had yesterday, God sometimes hits me in different ways. And he says, Brock, I think this is probably something you need to share with people because if it gets you off guard, it's probably getting other people off guard. Would you guys agree? Because situations in our personal life affect us as well as how we can help others. So the first thing that I said to him, I said, well, to be honest with you, I really had to change my mindset. I had a terrible mindset for the majority of my life, so I had to change my mindset. Then the next thing I decided to do was I had to develop a why. 
And my why had to be greater than any excuse that I had out there. And so I used my two kids. And then the final piece was I pray more often with more purpose. They say, if you have not, if you ask not. And so I started asking for things and I started reading different things and I started to pray more and I started to develop my why at at an extreme high level. And I created this mindset that pretty much was unbreakable. I created a mindset that when I tell you the quote that changed my life recently, because new quotes happen depending on what season you're in. The quote of basic, the quote that I learned when I was in Michigan with Brooke and they took me up there to their corporation, I met their CEO who was a billionaire. He said this on the stage. He said, being consistently good is better than being occasionally great. Being consistently good is better than being occasionally great. And that kind of struck me because I was just like, oh. That's, I guess that's what I've been practicing all this time. And so what I do now is when I'm in pain, because I'm thankful for pain, pain actually helps me get to the position. So if you're in pain, at some point you will be in pain and at some point you will feel it. And now what I do is I just know God's got my back. And so the pain is part of my plan. The pain is part of my process. It's like, well, I have to go through this right now because this is the path that I'm supposed to take. What can I take from this pain? See, the difference between society is mostly society says, why me? You don't understand, Brock. I'm a victim. No. It's part of your growing process. It's part of your pain. And so when the attorney said this to me, I was like, well, that was part of my pain process that I had to go through. And now I actually am more dangerous because you should see what's inside my head. I feel like I'm unstoppable. And the thing that I recently heard, because ironically, I don't know how this all takes place. I was just listening to Ed Myatt and Ed Myatt said this. And I wrote it down. I've learned at a different level that I didn't think was possible, that I reprogram my brain, my brain as a baby. And he might say, wait a minute. And I said the same thing when I was listening to Ed's thing. He goes, you have to understand, when you are born, you are not placed with negativity inside your head. Everything that's inside your head is brand new and fresh. And I get to live it when I see my son, Bryce, because he is naive to understand. Like, he's brand new. He doesn't understand the differences. So how he learns is the environment he's in and what is programming inside his brain. What is good is bad. What's right from wrong. All Yes, do this. No, don't do this. What can I push? How far can I negotiate with dad? What takes place? All these things he's learning. And I thought it was amazing because we as adults, as we grow older, what happens to us is our surroundings take over and they put stuff into our head. That's why they say, if you hang around negative people, what happens to you? If you're around downers, if you're around people who hurt your goals and say, you can't do this. If you're around these type of people, if you watch these type of things, if you read these type of books, if you're out late, you're sleeping in, you're doing these crazy things, you're around people who are not putting you in a better position. Guess what, guys? I have news for you. That's going to take inside your brain. And that's what happened to me during my drinking days. That's what happened to me when I thought my ego and everything around me, I just absorbed it, but I was filtering in all the negativity and not pouring into myself. And so I reprogrammed myself as a baby because as a baby inside my mind, I'm like, well, I never had these thoughts when I was a baby. And now when things come in my direction, I don't let outside distractions anymore control me. It's all inside now. And see, what is outside can affect what's inside. And I learned that. And when I got done talking to the attorney, he kind of said to me, he goes, (laughs) he goes, I can see how you're a coach. I feel a little bit more motivated right now. And I said, well, I I appreciate that. But let me just tell you, (laughs) let's not forget 2019 was not fun, though. It was it was a very hellish year. 
And it gave me the strength that I didn't realize will help me today when I get to share stories like this with you guys, when I get to share stories in front of teachers, when I get to speak and when I get to coach people and I get to change their life and hopefully trigger something inside of you today. That focus on your inside, figure out your mindset change, figure out what's your why and ask God to help you. I was talking to somebody the other day. They're like, Brock, I've been praying. I've been doing this. And I said, well, what have you been asking? And they tell me what they're asking. I said, well, you're going to have to ask for something different then. And they kind of looked at me a little like kind of chuckling like, well, that does make sense. Well, just change what you ask then. If that's not working, it's not coming to you at the time period you need to come. Ask it for something different then. Ask it in a different way. God's going to be okay with that. I promise. So I, I... I share this with you in conclusion today. Let the power of pain help you, not victimize you. Let it help you grow. When you're in pain right now, think about it. Think about that pain that you're in to understand like, hmm, I actually, there's something coming from this. I don't know yet, but I'm just going to keep trying. And my last thing is find, create a why that is greater than your excuses. In the book that I'm reading, Atomic, Fa- uh, Atomic, I can't even remember the book, Atomic Habits, he talks about the difference between successful people and people who are just mediocre, nothing wrong with mediocre. He goes, they just find success and boredom. And I'll explain that next week, but it's so true. A lot of stuff I do, I get bored doing. I, I like I'm always trying to change things up, but really I have to be consistent because I know that boredom is going to help me. So, guys, it is 829. Anybody have something they like to share about that? A question that they have? I'm trying to I try to look at some of the chats, the same token, keep my mindset in check so I don't get distracted as I'm looking at my notes and looking at different things on Facebook. Um, so um so who's got something for me? Anything that somebody like to have, throw something in the comments. If you liked it in Facebook world, give me a heart, give me a, give me a thumbs up. If that, if that struck you, if that was something that, that really took it, thank you Taylor for your comment there. I appreciate that. Um, thank you, Christian. Um, does anybody have something that they want to, that they want to share with me? Meg, thank you very much for your comment. I will reach out to you, Meg. Yeah, God works in mysterious ways. Um, yes, thank you very much. Who's got something? I could thank everybody here. Well, nobody's, if nobody's got jumping in, I've got something to Christian, add to it, I guess. What do you got, buddy? Um, I, I really like, you know, I, I like the whole idea of letting the pain motivate you. That's one way for me that works, you know, um, one person, if you haven't listened to him or people haven't listened to him, he's, he cusses a lot and he's real in your face, but his name is Andy Frazella. He owns a very successful oh, yes. supplement company. But like one of the things I listen to when I'm like, and a lot of people don't agree with this, but you know, there's the carrot and the stick approach, you know, and, and the truth is a lot of people are more motivated by the stick than the carrot. You know, you tell someone, Hey, you do these, you do this and you'll make a million dollars in a year. Or you say, Hey, you do this or I'm going to unleash this pit bull on you. A lot of people, will run a lot quicker and do a lot more things if, if there's pain involved. Anyways, Andy talks about letting the pain really motivate him. When He's a supplement co- company owner, and, and he got extremely overweight. And he said, you know, he would look in the mirror and tell himself, like, dude, you are screwing up. You know, you're a hypocrite, yada, yada, yada. But he would use that pain to help push him forward to do the right thing. So for me, that works better also. But it doesn't work best for everybody. But for a lot of people, I think it does. And so I think, you know, letting yourself – feel that pain and using that as a motivator to push you forward is, is very beneficial for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I do listen to him stuff and he's kind of like those, like he's, he's the rated R version of it, but (laughs) sometimes you need it. Like, I mean, guys, I'm not, you know, I, I don't curse. I don't curse in front of my kids. I don't, I don't like every so often, like Wendy be like, did you just say the F word? I said, I know it every once in a while it does come out, but don't, 
in my head though, when I need to get myself motivated, he's the type of guy that you need because like life's not easy. You can't, you got to get a little swift kick in the tail sometimes to be able to get yourself moving and shaking. So I do, I do like him and thank you for bringing his name up. If you can, uh, Christian, put him in the chat. So then that way people who want to, um, Google him or look him up could do that. So thank you for that. Anybody else have a question, a comment, or anything they like to share? Even a real estate related, anything at all, guys. I know it's Friday, so everybody's still. <clears throat> Thank you, Christian. I just saw that. All right. Everybody's just getting them. Well, guys, I I hope you have a good weekend. If uh, nobody has anything else out there, hopefully you're able to take something um, from today's message and put yourself in a better position. Uh, use the strength inside of you. Use the pain that you possibly are going through. You know, if if coaching or something that you need, you know, feel free to reach out to me. That's that's my passion. That's what I'm here. Amber, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Um, Meg, thank you. I'm just looking at some of these uh, messages as we do this. I'm starting to get better at this. I was telling Christian and Greg, like at first it's overwhelming because you got like 13 things on your screen and you're trying to keep a, keep your, your mind in check and not get distracted. So Facebook world, thank you so much for being here. For those that watch it on replay, thank you so much. Please feel free to heart it, like it, hit replay on the comments. If you got anything, if you need any help in the coaching world, real estate and life, feel free to reach out to me and we will see you on Monday, Facebook world with good old big money. Mike will be with us for Monday mornings with Mike. He will be here. So uh, please join us, share it with friends, share it with other people. Love to be able to have you. Josie, thank you so much. Have a great weekend. Karen, Chaz, thank you so much. All right, guys. So let's little Facebook world.